Hey guys, down on the coast this morning. Got a little slab I'm doing here all by myself. Right in some type of, some cove, the, the tide's way, way out right now. You can see it's down about 10 or 12 feet below high tide. Getting ready to go, no pump today. So we got the conveyor truck, that's 40 feet right there. You can reach 40 feet. Got my little chute so I can get the rest of this, but we're gonna get her done today. Hey guys, so I'm down here pouring today. I'm way down on the coast. I'm about an hour away from the shop. We live in Maine, and we, you know where my shop is takes me about an hour to get to the ocean or the coast of Maine. So I'm way down on a little tiny town on the coast of Maine, and I'm you know somebody's remodeling a house here. I'm not working for the builder here. I'm working for the guys that do the concrete foundation and those piers you see up there in the back. So I get a call saying, hey, you know, the slab's ready. We need you to come down and pour this slab. And that's what I do. I come down, I, I tap con those forms in the outside edges to the, the level of the floor. And then I show up and pour the concrete. Now, the reason I'm here by myself today and I don't have uh, Luke and Darren is because it's hunt season in Maine. It's in, it's in the fall. It's in October. And... Those guys both really like hunting, so they put in for their moose permits. In Maine, you can hunt moose. There's a lot of moose up north in northern Maine. And the reason they have a hunt for them is because there gets to be too many. The herd gets to be too big, then they start getting out in the roads, and people hit them with their cars. And if you don't know what a moose is, it's a really, really big uh, animal about the size of a, a horse, a really big horse. So you definitely don't want to hit them with one of your cars. So Luke and Darren, up this week... Uh, Luke got picked for the permit. You got to apply for the permit, and then hope it goes into a lottery, and then you get chosen. Well, Luke's been putting in for years and years, and he's never got chosen until this year. So, this was the week that them guys went up there hunting. So that's why I'm here today by myself. Got to keep things moving. Got to keep work going. And this slab, you know, it needed to get done so these builders can continue, you know, doing what they need to do to get this closed in before winter time. It's, it's, you know, I don't typically pour by myself. I did a lot when I was younger, um, and it didn't bother me at all. But nowadays, you know, I just soon have a helper. <laughs> Luckily, Josh there, the concrete driver, you know, went and grabbed a come along. He stepped in and tried helping me a little bit. So, I mean, that's the type of drivers, concrete drivers that we have is, uh, you know, if they, they're always jumping and help if we need them to. So there's never been a question with that. So I'm getting the concrete pulled around. This is about about a 200 square foot slab so it's not huge I think I got five yards it was about six inches thick so we got most of the mud pulled around and the next the next thing I need to do is to you know mag float my edges to give me something to screed off from and you know one of the keys about pouring concrete by yourself is just understanding the nature of concrete how it sets up how fast it sets up how much time you have to do what you need to do and then with your own skill set just how quick you are or how slow you are so knowing knowing that you know it's it's a little cool here today you can see we got sweatshirts on temperatures aren't real warm i'm not in the sun it's early in the morning uh yes the concrete did have about an hour's drive so the concrete was in the truck there spinning for about an hour before it got here but even so it's when it showed up I could tell the concrete wasn't hot you can kind of feel it and touch it and if the concrete's cool to touch or even cold you know you're gonna have quite a bit of time to put it in and it's not gonna start setting up on you too quick so basically you know I, I try to get most of it poured out I get all my edges magged we call that when I'm magging to a chalk line you know I shot that chalk line with a laser level to get it nice and level they didn't want any slope on this they just wanted it level they're actually going to put some like bluestone over it so it's you know they'll put down 
a quarter inch or three eighths inch of mud and then you know set that bluestone right in it for a nice outside patio i could have stamped the concrete to look like bluestone i guess but they didn't ask for that they just wanted me to put this base pad down so what i need to do is i got i got my eight foot screed i could have used a bigger one a 10 or a 12 footer but i can do it just as well with an eight footer and I got the concrete a little bit low so I got to get a little bit more in there that's one thing about working by yourself you know especially when you screed there's no one there to really push or pull the concrete around for you so if you get it too high or if it's low you got to stop and you got to you know move the concrete around a little bit more whereas if you do have somebody helping you they can be doing that while you're screeding so it takes a little bit of the pressure off you it takes a little bit of work off off you it just makes things go a little quicker but for something this size, it, it wasn't too, too bad. You can see uh, when I'm screeding this, you can see my head looking back and forth from right to left. I'm just making sure I score. When I when I mean my score is the end of my screed leaves a tiny little bit of a line in the concrete where I've screeded before. That means I'm right where I need to be. I'm right flush with the surface of the concrete. If I'm not leaving that line, that means I'm riding a little bit high and I'm going to leave a hump in the concrete. And then if I'm digging in, you know, much more than an eighth of an inch or so, then I'm going to create a low spot. So I keep looking back and forth to make sure my ends are scoring. And then I know, I know the middle is good if my ends are scoring, as long as I'm filling the holes where my feet are. So there's your basic simple lesson on screeding. <laughs> Let me know how that lesson was down in the comments. And if you've ever screeded, boy, have you ever tried screeding before? I mean, that's see that little line I'm leaving? That's exactly where you wanna where you wanna leave for a line when you're screeding it. Just enough so it's scoring on the surface. I didn't feel like getting a pump today. I mean, we I could have used a pump. The trouble with a pump was the access out in front of this house. They had lumber everywhere, so the access was really tight for getting a big pump truck in there, and then a concrete truck in behind it and then you are you know whenever you use a pump truck you got to order an extra yard of concrete just to fill all the pipes on the truck so there would have been another yard of concrete plus up here the pump guys charge about twelve hundred dollars just to get the pump truck here versus it cost two hundred and fifty dollars to use the conveyor truck so i made the decision myself to save the contractor a little bit of money just by using the conveyor. I knew I knew I could get him close. I didn't know if he'd quite reach that edge. But you know, I got I got plenty of different size shoots. I got that eight footer I use here today. I got a twelve footer. I got a sixteen footer. So there wasn't much question I'd be able to reach the slab with a conveyor. It was just how close could the conveyor get, you know, when I backed him down the side of the house. Can see how fussy I am when I mag those edges. I want to make sure it's right perfect with that chalk line so you know we don't want any high spots, we don't want any low spots. That's really the key whenever you're doing some type of slab, especially if you want a level slab. So I have to stop, fill my footprints now. If there's a guy or girl puddling behind you, we call it puddling, but raking the concrete behind you, they're filling that stuff as you're screeding so you don't really have to stop as much. Now, I might be stopping and starting just because I'm old, um, but for, for the most part, for the most part, the screeding went pretty well on this. And having the right slump too is a key. You know, you don't want to pour too, too stiff, especially if you don't have to. I'm using a 3500 PSI Crete here. I got mid-range water reducer in it so I could pour the slump a little looser without adding water. I mean that helps as far as labor goes and if you don't know about that stuff I got all kinds of videos talking about mid-range water reducers and why we use them and you know just you know if you haven't subscribed yet hit the subscribe button you can check out a bunch more of those videos but just watch here in a minute you'll see how smooth this is going to be after I bow float it and that's that's going to be a really nice surface for them guys to lay those uh, blue stones on the blue stones themselves, they're about two inches thick. There I am, just tapping the edges, making sure the edges come out nice and smooth when I when I strip the forms off. One of the keys of running a bow float like this too is just don't go too fast. 
Just down, nice and slow and steady. Pull it back nice and steady without stopping. And get it back and kind of slide it up and lift it at the same time. And then just set over. And that, see that line on the right, the bull float's leaving? I overlap that a little bit when I pull back and it doesn't leave a, quite as bad a line. And that's basically going to be the finished surface for this, you know, and then once I get it bow floated, I'll go around the edges with my mag float. And if I, you know, mag those lines out where I pick the bow float up, and then if I need to reach out and hit any other lines, I can reach out and do that at this time. That's one of the reasons I use what we call, it's, it's kind of like a Darby mag. It's just a little bit longer, bigger mag than a regular mag float. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. How did I do? Did I do okay? Was I slow? Was I fast? And again, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. All my videos are all about concrete stuff, and we'll see you on the next one.